Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Waller's Wallet. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at capital gain taxes and what they are, how much those tax rates are, and how to pay lower taxes when it comes to investing. Now, capital gains apply to a few different assets such as stocks, real estate, and others. But we're really gonna be focusing more on the stocks and index fund side of things. And when it comes to capital gains, we are looking at taxable brokerage accounts like using Webull, SoFi, or Robinhood, for example. And when you decide to sell your investment, that can have a big effect on your tax implications. And I've seen quite a few stories of people getting tax bills they weren't expecting because they didn't realize they'd be taxed after they sell their stocks. So what are capital gain taxes? Now these are the taxes you pay when you sell your positions in your taxable brokerage accounts for a profit. Now when you hold shares of a company stock or an index funds, I'm sure you've seen the price go up and down and those gains or losses when you hold those positions are considered unrealized gains or losses because you haven't sold that asset yet. And you really don't make money or lose money until you sell it because you're still on the ride and you don't pay taxes on those unrealized gains or losses as long as you hold those positions. But once you decide to exit the ride and sell the shares for a profit, those gains become realized and are subjected to taxes. Now, if you sell for a loss, it can actually benefit you as well, which I'll touch on in just a minute. For example, if you bought three shares of Apple at $125 a share, then the share price goes up to 175 bucks and you sell all of your positions you would have made a total of $150 because you made $50 per share. And that $150 is going to be taxed since it was profit. But the rate at which you'll be taxed, it's gonna depend on a few things. It's gonna depend on your income and how long you have held that stock. If you've held an investment for one year or less, you're gonna be subjected to short-term capital gain taxes. If you hold that investment for more than a year, it's gonna be taxed at the long-term capital gains rate. Even if you sell your shares of a stock and leave that cash in your account or immediately buy shares of something new, it's gonna be subjected to taxes if you sold those shares for a profit. It doesn't matter if you didn't take that money out of your account or not. And each time you buy shares of a stock and sell them for a profit, it's gonna be subjected to taxes. Now, if you're finding this video helpful, then be sure to hit that like button. It helps others find the channel and it's a free and simple way to support the channel as well. But how much are you going to pay in taxes? Now, the big reason to hold off selling your investments for at least one year is due to the more favorable tax rates you'll get when you sell that stock or index fund after that one year mark. And the tax rate for short-term capital gains, it's gonna be the same as your ordinary income. This is pretty much the same tax rate you pay for your job. So if you fall into the 24% tax bracket, then that is the rate that your investing profits would be taxed at. And the tax rates here can range from 10% to 37% depending on your income. And depending on how much you made, these gains could potentially push you into the next tax bracket as well. So if you're someone who got into these meme stocks and decided to sell your positions for a $25,000 profit just a few months after buying them, since you sold within that one year's time frame, you're gonna be hit with short-term capital gains rate for that $25,000. Now making a profit is nice, but if you weren't expecting the tax bill, this could really catch you off guard. And depending on your situation, this could potentially have you going from getting a tax return to paying in for taxes. Now the long-term capital gains rate is much more favorable and the taxes you'd pay for those gains are going to be lower. It's almost like it's an incentive to hold your position for a longer period of time. And there are only three different tax brackets for long-term capital gains. It's 0%, 15%, and 20%. And yes, there's actually a 0% tax rate for long-term capital gains and these rates are gonna be based on your taxable income that you have. Now, there are a couple of exceptions to this, but this is not going to affect most people. And even the IRS mentions that the majority of people pay no more than the 15% tax rate for the long-term capital gains. And the rate, again, is gonna be dependent on how much you make. If you're single making up to $40,400 in a year, you would pay 0% for your long-term capital gains. Between $40,401 to $445,850, your long-term capital gain rate is gonna be 
and anything above $445,851, you would be charged 20% for your capital gains. For married couples filing jointly, you would pay 0% in capital gains if your taxable income was $80,800 or less. If it was between $80,801 to $501,500, then your long-term capital gains rate is just 15%. Anything over $501,601, your long-term capital gain rate is going to be 20%. And to put that into perspective, if you are a single person with a taxable income of $75,000, your long-term capital gains rate would be 15%, which compared to your marginal tax rate would actually save you 7% in taxes. And if you make more money, then the tax savings can be even larger because you can be going from a 37% tax bracket to paying 20% for your long-term capital gains, and that is a pretty big difference. Now let's talk about how to reduce your tax implications. If you have a taxable account like Webull, holding your positions until you reach that long-term capital gain rate is an easy way to help reduce the taxes you're going to pay on those investments. But if you're someone just buying and selling stocks throughout the year, then using some of those losses can help reduce your taxes as well. Because if you sell your positions at a loss, it's going to help offset those capital gains you had throughout the year. For example, if you sold those three shares of Apple stock just a few months after buying them and you made that $150, but you also bought four shares of Bank of America and you sold those four shares for a $75 loss in the same year you sold your Apple stock, then those losses would reduce the amount of taxes you would owe, going from $150 being subjected to taxes down to $75. So those losses can be beneficial to helping reducing your taxes. Now, if you're someone who actually had more capital losses than capital gains, you could potentially lower your taxable income by up to $3,000. Now, if you had more than $3,000 in capital losses, you can actually carry that into the next tax year as well. Then you can also look to use tax loss harvesting, where you look to sell off some of your positions that have currently lost you money to help offset the capital gains that you may have had, then you could put that money into similar funds if you wanted to. Now with any of these options to reduce your tax bill, I would highly consider talking to a tax advisor as I'm sure they have a far better understanding of the tax code than I do. But when it comes to investing your money, understanding how your money could be taxed, it's very important because if you don't understand the tax implications, you could be costing yourself some money. And receiving a tax bill you weren't expecting is never a fun thing. Now, if you're someone who's buying and selling stocks and making a profit, then you might be okay with the short-term capital gains rate as you're still making a profit, even if the tax rate is higher than long-term capital gains. But if you're trying to invest for the long term, or maybe you made a lot of money on a particular stock and you're looking for an exit strategy on it, then reaching the long-term capital gains rate, it's gonna help you reduce those taxes on those realized gains. And in either situation, just having an understanding of the tax implications can be helpful so you can make a better, well-informed decision. So let me know, have you received an unexpected tax bill for short-term capital gains? Now, if you're someone looking for a way to pay less taxes, then be sure to check out this video right here where I tell you three simple ways to pay less taxes and reduce your taxable income. And if you know someone that would find this video useful, feel free to share with them. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.